Here, nearly 200 people died, and because of the poor response to the disaster, this is recorded as the biggest subterranean fire disaster ever in Asia. Now, in the acute phase of the disaster, poor coordination and lack of, uh, lack of communication uh, greatly aggravated the problems. The command center of the subway station was poorly informed of the situation that had occurred when the fire broke out. Furthermore, the authorities at the scene had no proper manual to act by, and as a result, the evacuation announcement was made too late, and the casualty was increased unreasonably and tragically. There were problems in the long-term phases as well. There was no proper legislative or administrative system as a response to this type of disaster situation, which was unprecedented. Uh, because of this, not only did the issue of legal responsibilities were left largely unresolved, but also, the matters of compensation to the disaster survivors were left quite inefficient. Now we'll be talking about our second case analysis, which is the Selbongho ship fire incidents. Uh, a cargo ship named Selbongho had caught on fire in the middle of the sea, far from Penang, at night. However, due to successful uh, re disaster response, all of its 130 crews were able to escape safely. The success of this response can be attributed to the successful communication and coordination at the acute phase of response. Upon uh, receiving the emergency call, the maritime police arrived within an hour followed by the Navy. Between these two bodies were an effective line of communication that was unified. Furthermore, the, all, the, all the personnel and the crew were trained well in case of fire emergencies. Uh, thanks to this, all personnel were rescued within three hours after the fire occurred. Uh, as a long-term response, the evaluations were made on the effectiveness of these uh, fire management. But despite the adverse condition of being in the middle of the sea farm from land, all of its crew were able to escape, uh, manage to escape safely. Uh, thanks to the fire drill training and the uh, effective communication. Uh, thanks to these results, there were further further training on fire drills and the establishment of a unified, firm communication basis. <coughs> the main differences between the ship case and the aforementioned metro case is that here, the rescuers were well informed of the situation before arriving to the scene, uh, thereby enabling themselves to rescue with more efficiency. Furthermore, the authorities of the scene had a standardized manual to act by so they could promptly evacuate the personnel. Now we will talk about our conclusions. Uh, as these uh, case analyses have demonstrated, the effectiveness of the acute phase of response uh, depends on the successful communication and coordination. Uh, this makes sense because in a fire situation, the lives of many may depend on a matter of minutes. Now, in order to prepare for uh, with a more effective response system in the future disasters, uh, a unified system to effectively analyze the adverse effects of the disaster, both short-term and long-term, is requisite. And accordingly, appropriate administrative and legislative measures should be taken. Now we'll talk about the possible roles of medical students. We have uh, mentioned before in our results that the fire disaster victims are prone to suffer from long-term ailments such as psychological disorders or even physical debilitations. However, they do not always get the public attention that they deserve. Now, this is where the medical students can help. For example, they can work to raise public awareness campaigns or raise funds, or they can also participate in supplying provisions for the fire disaster victims. This will not only be helpful for the victims, but will also allow the medical students to understand better how it's like to undergo an event so terrible. That was our presentation. Thank you for your presentation.